right, good morning you guys, Trev Smashworks. Listen, we're gonna go over something uh, pretty unique again today. I know we've done the jaw, we've done the pec minor, we've done some pretty funky stuff. But uh, today I got a message from, uh, and now it says uh, Khaleesi on the name, It's uh, so I'm gonna go by that. That's what she sent me a message on Instagram about, um, about scoliosis and training. And if there's a correction, if we can correct scoliosis, if not, that's totally okay. Um, but how it's gonna affect lifting. So here's the problem. And, and I'll walk you through it. Scoliosis, it affects a lot of people. Now to be technically scoliosis, you have to be over 20 degrees of, uh, of lateral deviation. Otherwise, it's just called lateral deviation. Doesn't matter what it's called. The, what, what happens is it's affecting the mechanics of the spine, which in turn affects the mechanics of everything we do. Because remember, when our spine is stacked, remember I talked about the L rule, nice and tight, super strong. That ability to stack our vertebra on top of themselves gives us that really rigid ability to take what's called an axial load. Now, I'm not saying if you have scoliosis, this is going to decrease your ability. It just means there's going to be some modifications that we need to do because structurally, when you're really young, you can get a lot of correction on this stuff. But when you're a little older, it takes a little bit more effort. So when you have scoliosis, it means basically you have a, an S-shaped curve to your spine. Thoracic spine goes one way, lumbar spine goes the other way, and it's from the A to P. So anterior to posterior, you can see this curve. So what happens is not only do you get rotation, or not only do you get deviation of the spine, you also get rotation of the vertebra, which means it's gonna affect mechanics of everything, including the ribs. So I'm gonna show you how to do some tissue work to unload some of that, because it'll help change the mechanics of how the uh, vertebra are oriented, so you can increase your ability to take a, um, an axial load. More importantly, you have a little more freedom of movement. If you're really young, this is gonna help um, bony formation. So if you're like 12, 14 years old, you can actually correct a lot of this stuff just by uh, doing a lot of these mobility drills. So the more important thing is we have to think about all the tissues that attach on the spine. So in this case, we got the psoas, super strong muscle designed to do what? Remember what I said? It's designed primarily to stabilize the lumbar spine, <gasps> right? Really tight. Secondary is it's a hip flexor along with the rectus femoris. And then we get up into the thoracic spine, we have all those attachments in the thoracic spine. Trapezius, longissimus, transversalis. There's a lot of stuff in there, so we're gonna loosen all those up too. Do them in all, all in one fell swoop, so it's super easy. But now flip around to the front side. Pecs, minor, major, all that stuff. Everything wants to fold inwards. Now imagine this, we have our spine, or our, our system folding inward like this, okay? And we have this lateral deviation to our spine. How stable are we? Mm, not very stable. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unload all this stuff. There's a ton of stuff to do here, so I'm gonna cover as much as possible to help you out and then uh, see how you feel. But I guarantee you, your lifts are gonna feel better, your lifts are gonna feel faster, and you won't feel that, that pressure off to one side. You won't get those pinches and, and, and real bad um, stability issues that you have when you don't address this. So it's super easy. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna do the couch stretch. We need to unload two muscles. So the couch stretch hits actually three muscles primarily. Hits the rectus femoris, which is right down the front. Remember, biphasic muscle tibial tuberosity all the way up to the anterior superior iliac spine goes down the front it's a hip flexor and a, and a, and a lower leg extensor so we're going to hit that it hits the uh, psoas deep inside l2 to l5 remember and then it hits the uh, the uh, iliacus which comes off the iliac crest which is the pelvis so all these things come into play when it comes to the spine because remember if your pelvis is like this you're not going to have a stable platform we don't want that you get in the bottom of a snatch you have a platform out here what do you do you dump the bar so get yourself an ab mat don't do this on just your knee, it's gonna hurt. All right, get your leg up all the way up. Crank it all the way up as far as you can. So you wanna get all the way up, like with me, I can hang out like this all day long. So what I'm doing is I'm squeezing my butt, I'm sucking my spine in a little, my belly button into my spine, so I'm in a little bit of a hollow position, and I'm trying to throw my pelvis forward while maintaining my glute contacted to my heel. So I'm, I'm being as far as I can in this position, I'm holding this position as tight as I can. One minute, one minute each side. That's gonna help loosen all this stuff up. Now, if you can't get to this point, take a knee. Rest like this, if this is as tight as it gets and this is as far as you can move, that's okay. Eventually, you'll be able to get all the way up here and get into this kind of a position. That's number one, hold it for two minutes, okay? Number two is, we're gonna flip around and hit that posterior chain. Super easy. You can do this while watching TV. Nobody watches TV. We watch CrossFit games when we watch things, right? So you're gonna take your feet, hand width apart. You're gonna sit up against the wall. Don't do this on a couch, don't do this in bed. Okay, you're gonna slide your lumbar spine all the way up. So what I do is I tend to come up the wall, push myself, the small of my back, all the way up against the wall, and then just camp out like this. Keep the feet pointed straight up towards the sky, hand width apart. You're gonna feel the, uh, the hamstrings, the adductors, the calves, the soleus, uh, all that stuff is gonna be in here. Sit upright though, don't lean forward like this. And when you come out of this, the important thing is, this one by the way, you're gonna hold for five minutes. When you come out of this, unlock your posterior chain first, 
and then get on the side and unload all this. Now, the reason we're addressing the pelvis is because it's always missed when people go and talk about back pain and scoliosis and deviation of the spine and misalignment. They're only addressing these tiny little issues. That's like me taking somebody's problem and just looking through this tiny little glass and going, there's only one thing that's affecting it. The body's a dynamic unit. We got to take care of the whole thing. So posterior chain, right? We can get into mobility and stuff, but you guys, that's a, we could go on for probably about two hours on this. So we're going to get the posterior chain loosened up. We're going to hit the anterior portion as well, right? The hip flexors. And then we're going to get a wall ball, med ball, whatever you want to call it. And there's two things we're going to do. Let me, let me take this. My camera skills are a little bit to be desired. So, hey, don't make fun of me. You know, two things. Doesn't matter what side the bend is on. I don't really care. Neither should you. You're going to do what's called a side opener. So you're going to get, get on this. This is basically going to sit right underneath the armpit. Be as lateral as you can. Leg on the upside is going to be the bent one. Takes a little bit of the pressure off the pelvis. Kick that bottom leg straight out. Take your hand. Always externally rotate that stuff. Keep that shoulder nice and safe. Externally rotate, crank all the way over. This hand can just sit here, and all you're gonna do, without falling off the ball like that, all you're gonna do is you're gonna hang out like this, externally rotate it, and if it's easier, just let that arm dangle a little bit like this. But I want you to really feel that, curving that spine towards this side, so the bow of the curve is on the upside. Lots of big deep breaths, hang out here for a minute or two, flip around, do the other side. That's number one. And you know what? Use like a 20 or 30. Don't use a, a six or a 10 pound ball because they're kind of like a marshmallow. You're going to sink into it. This gives you a little bit of stability. Now I'm going to have you flip around and go on your back. The reason I'm going to use a, a wall ball instead of a foam roller or a piece of PVC for this is because the PVC and the foam roller is going to isolate one direction, right? You're just going to fulcrum over it this way. With this ball, what's going to happen is you're going to allow the scapula to fold out. So you're going to be able to do two plane or two ranges of motion. You're going to be able to fold over this way and you're going to fold over this way. So your spine will arch over, right? And the rib cage will open up, allow that sternum to open up because the rib contact comes all the way around to the front. So we want to take care of the whole thing because remember, dynamic unit. So you're going to get on it. It's going to go right between the shoulder blades. So right here, it's going right in the middle. Allow that scapula to open up. One leg is bent. Remember, disengage the pelvis. The other leg is straight. Give you a little bit of stability. Externally rotate all the time. Lock your hands out. You can touch the floor, great. If not, that's okay, it's not a contest. Hang out like this, let your head hang back. Don't hold your head through, this is the only time I'm gonna say that, okay? All right, so you can let yourself hang out like this. So I'm on the floor right here, just camp out like this. How long? Two minutes. I don't even need to look, you guys get this stuff. All right, so we got two minutes on that. That's gonna open up the thoracic spine. So now we've taken care of lateral deviation, anterior posterior, right? So front, back, side to side, super easy stuff. A lot of things are missed when it comes to this. We're gonna take the peanut, now we're gonna isolate all this stuff. So you can do it with a peanut. You can take a, a 45 pound plate. You can take a kettlebell, throw it on your chest. You can do it without anything. What I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna take this. Spine sits right down the middle. So you're gonna, let's see if I can do this without falling over. So this is where the peanut's gonna go. You guys don't know what a peanut is. It's two lacrosse balls taped together. Super complicated piece of equipment. You're gonna take it on the floor. You're gonna work all the way from where your thoracic spine starts, all the way up to the base of the, uh, of the, of the, um, the, the neck, so the base of the cervical spine. You wanna be able to rock back and forth on each segment. So you're gonna do it 12 different times because there's 12 bones. Now I know we break up the segments of the, uh, of the spine into cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. It's a neat little way to talk about it, except the problem is it's all one unit. We know that stuff. So go ahead and get on this. Don't mind it. We're just gonna get on here and we're just gonna hang out like this. We're gonna isolate back and forth, and we're gonna fulcrum back and forth on this. Now, it gets a little tricky when you get up to the top portion. When you get up, without the peanut disappearing on you, see, this stuff just checks out on you. That's why I make candid videos. They're super easy. You're gonna come all the way up into the top portion, but when you get up into the top portion of the thoracic spine, same thing like this, pick your butt up. Oh, that's just, that is abysmal. Man, I need to do this more often. I think I got some curves in my spine. And you're just gonna rock back and forth. Rock back and forth. I'm telling you, this, oh, that sucks. That hurts. Okay, so that, you're gonna do that all the way up through one to 12, all the way up to the thoracic spine. I know we're doing a lot for mobility, but this is a real serious issue we wanna take care of because it'll give you longevity of spine. You won't get decay because when one segment wears out, then the one above wears out, then the one above wears out, and it becomes this long chain. All right, so we get that. 
I want you to smash out the psoas too. So we've done this stuff. Let's take the pressure out because remember, if the psoas is pulling short and tight on one side, it's gonna cause the spine. So if this is the lumbar spine, this is the psoas, and it gets short and tight, watch what it's gonna do. It's gonna pull down like this. It's gonna pull it into a curve. So it's pulling it into a curve. What do you think above's gonna do? It's gonna curve the other direction trying to compensate because we have this thing called the writing reflex, which means that we won't walk around like this. Our body will bring ourselves like this, even if we're all translated inside and our spine looks like a Z. Okay, now you're gonna take this, you're gonna find the belly button, you're gonna go an inch to one side, you're gonna make sure the horn of the kettlebell goes lengthwise, not widthwise. This is incredibly diabolical. You're gonna take the kettlebell, you're gonna flip it upside down, keep both knees bent so we keep that hip disengaged, and all we're gonna do, take about 20 seconds to let it sink into the abdomen. That's right, I said that, let it sink into your stomach. See if you can get the corner of that right in that psoas. Man, and then just let it beat that so as to pieces. Now remember, the femur doesn't track this way, it tracks out. So to avoid banging into the top of the acetabulum, the top of the hip joint, I want you to flare your leg out like that. So you're just gonna go in and out 15 times. Use a pretty heavy kettlebell. I'm using this just as an example because I don't feel like picking up a 70, I'm just being honest. This is a 35, but use a 53, use a 70. Get on there, do both sides 15 times a side. So now we're peeling that psoas off that lumbar spine and allowing it to hit that uh, femur properly so it can do that internal rotation and that hip flexion the way it's supposed to. So it has a nice free range of motion. We're opening up that, uh, that fascia so that muscle, remember it's like a stake on a stake. There's a paper you know, lining in between there. It's gonna allow it to slide back and forth the way it's supposed to. You recover a ton of motion this way. I've seen changes in degrees just by doing tissue mobility, never mind addressing the structure, which is what we did with the peanut. Now the last one, and this one's missed by a ton of people, is you're gonna get a foam roller, and you're gonna hit the adductors all in here. Now the adductors work in conjunction with the semi-membranosis in here, and they actually have fibers that work together. So you wanna peel those fibers apart so they can slide independently. You're gonna work all the way up basically into the base of the groin. You're gonna get into uh, where that ischial tuberosity is, that sit bone, and you're gonna work all the way down to just above the knee. And this is the one that's missed all the time, but imagine this. We put a shear on the pelvis. Instead of the pelvis sitting, this is the front, this is the top of the pelvis. Instead of the pelvis sitting like this, it sits like this. What do you think it's doing? It's twisting the spine, and the way coupled motion works in the spine is, when you rotate the spine, it automatically starts to laterally bend, especially in the lumbar spine. Where do you think all our weight comes, or when we're, uh, when we're standing under a snatch or an overhead squat, or we're doing anything with, uh, with an axial load? It all beats the hell out of that lumbar spine. So, get on the adductor. So the way you're gonna do it is you're gonna sit like this. On a, you can use a PVC, you can use a foam roll, but the key is you wanna rotate in a little bit, and then you're just gonna find that hot spot. And it's all you're gonna do is grind away. Go all the way down to just above that knee, if this isn't enough, grab a 45, chuck it on here. Make it your friend, peel this stuff away. Make this tissue move the way it's supposed to. Because now what you're doing is you're taking the pressure off that ischial tuberosity so you're not having that shear. So now the pelvis can balance out the way it's supposed to. Now there's a whole pelvic balance cycle that I go through as well. I'll do that in another video, otherwise I'm gonna be talking forever. So we've got mobilizing the, uh, the psoas, the iliacus and the rectus femoris. We've got fulcruming over the, uh, the wall ball both front and back and side to side with the lateral openers. Okay, we've got peeling away that set of adductors on either side. Go all the way up, there's four of them. Remember, right down to the gracilis. You're gonna get all four of these guys. Capture them, strip them away. Um, we've got the wall stretch for the posterior chain. Remember, slide that small of the back all the way up against the wall. And then we've got the couch stretch, upright as possible, but make sure you're sucking your belly button into your spine because what I don't want you to do is arch that lumbar spine because now you're just defeating the purpose of that couch stretch. We've got all that stuff, and then we've got the peanut, where we're going through all 12 segments of the, of the thoracic spine. If you can get even higher, go even higher. That's totally fine. Now, there's a whole much more that we could probably do, but that's a really great start to uh, take care of that scoliosis and help release some of that tissue and let it do what it's supposed to do. If you got any questions, you know what to do. Hey, I'm Trav Smashworks. You guys have a great day.